I'm Deanna Wallace. This is a 2010 Cessna 182. The Cessna 182 first went into production in 1956 and through several stops and starts, it's still in production today. It's classified as a high performance aircraft and comes with the available retractable gear, which gives it about 10 to 15% better performance. The newer 182s are referred to as next generation aircraft and come with the Garmin 1000 Advanced Avionics Suite. So let's talk to Deanna and learn more about this Cessna 182. Between my junior and senior year in high school, when I was 17, went out to the local airport, took my first flying lesson, just fell in love with it. Um, so I started looking for university options that offered that as a career path. Went to Auburn University, got all my flight ratings, um, went to Continental Express Airlines in 2001 and was promptly furloughed by 9-11. So I wasn't there but four months. They recalled two years later, but by that point I had fallen into the corporate side of things and loved it. I liked the smaller aircraft, the smaller passenger load. I've been instructing for 18 years and, and like that aspect. Yeah, it's exactly that. It's a temporary layoff. Um, of course, the time frame is always up in the air. So basically what happens is the airline hits a tough time. They lay off as many as they need to to financially survive through that. And then when it, they start growing again and it's time to hire, they call back those that they furloughed before they take in new hires off the street. Uh, I went to work right seat for a real estate developer in a King Air 300 and now I fly um, a King Air a B100 with the Garrett engines which is a bit of an oddity around here among all the PT6s. A uh, little bit um, again in a, a 300 right seat, fly lots of single engine turboprops, uh, the PA46 line, the Meridians and jet props. So on the King Air job, it's for a, a main local local business around here. They uh, for company business purely, and then the PA46 line I do both ferrying, uh, just contract pilot work and and instruction. I do not do the initial pilot instruction on those, but I do the annual recurrent instruction. I've been instructing for 18 years. Um, I do like it, otherwise you don't do it for 18 years. Um, I, you know, I, it's one of those now that's kind of a, uh, a sideline business to, to the contract flying that I do. But, uh, but yeah, I love to keep active, active students and, and keep instructing. It keeps me on top of my game and helps me, helps me further someone else's aviation dream. So the owner of this plane uh, bought it when he was uh, just uh, barely pre-solo. He bought it, so I did his private and instrument instruction in this plane. Um, it's been it's been a, a great plane. We've uh, it's been around for about five years now, I believe. Lots of time in it. I've got probably 300 hours in, in this tail number. And yeah, it's it's been a great plane. Uh, it's a G1000 avionics package, a great platform to both learn on and fly. So, so a G1000 is uh, what they call a technologically advanced aircraft glass cockpit. It's got a primary flight display that has your traditional six pack that as pilots come to know their basic instruments on your primary flight display as well as some other information and it's got a multi-function display that displays all your navigation data airport data and a host of other it's a wealth of information so it's a, a fantastic package that instead of running off the traditional instruments runs off of computers basically typical cruise speeds about 135 knots it um, burns about anywhere from 12 to 16 gallons per hour, depending on your altitude and, and what you're doing that day. But it's a, it's a fantastic four-place aircraft, uh, great for short or long hops, um, perfect for both beginning and advanced pilots. It's, you know, it's always fun. A little bit challenging when you first get into it if you're just if you're new to the to the flying world and wanting to learn. But it's a fantastic platform. It'll, you know, great for training, great for great for flying after your training. 
no real downside, although it is a little bit more complex. It has a controllable pitch propeller. Um, again, the glass cockpit makes it a little more challenging than the steam gauges originally, but it's a, uh, it's a, it's a great plane, although it may take you, if you buy it and do your primary instruction in it, it may take you a few hours longer than if you were to fly something like a Cessna 150 or a 172, the next lower models. Uh, may take a few extra hours to get your training in, just learning the additional systems. I love what I'm doing at the moment. The, um, the smaller, uh, smaller aircraft, small transport category, it's, uh, it's fantastic. It's been, it's been great for home life. I'm, I have very few overnights a month, so I'm home in my own bed, tucking my kids in every night, which has been great. So, you know, until my kids graduate, High school, I'll, I'll probably stick exactly to what I'm doing for the next, you know, six or seven years and, and then reevaluate where I want to be. So, Lady Dora. Dora is the name of the mother of the owner of this aircraft, and she was one of the early female aviation pioneers. There's a, we're not sure exactly what year she learned, but there's pictures of her and aircraft from dated to 1938. So, she was, uh, she was the inspiration behind the name. Hey, uh, are you ready to go fly? <laughs> ready to go fly. All right, let's do it. All that was left was to pull the airplane out and get it in the air. Bufkin, Angelina County Airport. Automated weather observation. Here got two zero five. Good, I'm three, just taking the yellow. Wind zero one zero at zero eight. Visibility one zero. Sky condition overcast two thousand three hundred. Temperature zero eight Celsius. Dew point zero three Celsius. Altimeter three zero one seven. Remarks. Density altitude minus six hundred. I hop from this is so many, through so many planes, from airframe to airframe. I have to review everything before I go to teaching it again. Or hey, how many, uh, how many different airplanes do you think you fly a month? Oh goodness, I would say uh, of at least five different airframes a month. Lufkin traffic, Skyline 76 Sierra Alpha, departing runway seven. Lufkin traffic. It's a windy day for flights, right? Yeah, well, it's nice to see you got your B speeds marked on your uh, airspeed indicator and all that. It is. There's a, a lot of different functionality in, in the G1000, and even after a few hundred hours, I'm sure yeah. there's still a lot of I don't know on them. It's a great platform. I'm a little surprised by the. Uh, so the uh, G1000 to G3000, there's a some differences there besides the touch screen but you know Garmin products are fantastic if you know one you can muddle your way through any of them. Uh, it's kind of interesting on the on the Gulf Streams that I used to fly the G4s and, and uh, or a few G3s that I the uh, the tape speed on the airspeed indicator you know run the opposite, the opposite of that yeah and then but when you went to the G5 it runs the same way as that so converting from a G4 to a G5 especially there's people that go back and forth all the time right but you look at it it's just weird for your mind for a second because that tape is running the opposite direction you're like ah well it's starting to get a little more hazy out here yeah when we were well when you were up on one of the flights you probably saw them there were a few showers in the area there, there earlier too. Was, uh, where do you take the students for your practice area out here? 
officially anywhere but town. So we go east, south, west, a uh, lot of rural areas up there that make for great, great practice spots. Hey, we, uh, every now and then we'll wander over to Lake Rayburn over there, but that's a popular sightseeing flight for for the area airport. So we tend to stay out of that area when practicing, just because there's bound to be other traffic. Well, when you're uh, when you have a student up and say you're practicing stalls or something like that, what else do you normally take them up to? Uh, we usually initiate stalls around 3,000 feet. G AGL or is that just MSL? MSL, okay. but field elevation here is only 250, oh, really? so okay. it's about the same difference. Right. So your students, are they mostly, uh, I mean, are they aspiring uh, like professional pilots or are they people that just kind of want to do it? No, oh, most of my students in this area are, uh, are are just local business people who just want to learn to fly either as a hobby or to aid them in their work. Um, so my typical student is probably your 35 to 50 year old old male. Um, we have a few females filter through, uh, but here lately it's been interesting. I've had uh, three different high school seniors call for flight lessons that are that are wanting to pursue it as a career and wanted to get a head start before they start exploring. Oh yeah, options. why not? I mean, it's a uh, you know what used to you would uh, you know ten years ago uh, it was tough getting a job as a pilot. Now you know as long as you don't crash and you have the flight right flight time, you can get it a great. Up. Right, the uh, airlines are hiring everyone with an HP and a pull these yep. days. Um, you know, but the the shortages had the pilot shortages had some some great benefits as well. You know, when I started with the airlines in 2001 with the regional, my starting pay was 19.9. Yeah. You know, and it was uh, you know for that first year while you're on probation, which is not a livable wage at all, and uh -huh. now it's significantly higher to entice people to go in. Right, I mean, you're seeing the pretty big bonuses, like first year and all that, I mean. Right, a lot of uh, pay for training now as well from the airlines, and many of them have started their own cadet programs right. to funnel people from from zero to, to them. Yeah. Uh, I don't think a lot of people understand that, like, uh, you know, uh, for a long time, pilots did make pretty good money, uh, but the, the people coming in had to pay their dues and didn't make much money at all. And I don't think, and, and the cost of training has come up so much. Yeah. You know, somebody that goes to Embry Riddle, which is one of the premier aviation schools, but they get out of school with 200000 I mean, almost like a doctor. Right. $200,000 in either student loans or debt or they pay for it. And then back then, you go, your first job was $19,000 a year. And right. Maybe your second year, you were making 40000 maybe. Right. You weren't making, you know, no, you weren't going in and, and making what a doctor would for the right. same edu educational cost. Right. Have you had any uh, weird incidents while you've been instructing? Well, you know, I, I like to think that I, I, I've seen most of it all by now. Uh, after so many years, I right. had plenty in my early days that, that gave me pause. Now, you know, you you live through them and you learn how to prevent some of that stuff from ever oh. <laughs> ever happening but but no i can't uh, other than you know a couple nighttime alternator failures in recent oh, years wow. that's always always fun and always at night right, you know, yeah. why does that happen but uh, um other than that i'd, I'd say my uh, training thankfully has been very routine yeah that's good uneventful just the way i like it as you say it's you know you have somebody trying to kill you every day you go to work. Right. <laughs> uh, when you're, you're, and uh, I, I didn't have any too bad. I did have one person one time just, I mean, you know, you just let him do it. And uh, he came in and he bounced the landing and, and instead of trying to keep on going, he just, ah, he just lets go. And I'm like, oh, you know. Yes. And so you're just immediately slamming the throttle and go, you know. And, and then you got to, you, you know, you got to talk to him and you got to be, you can't yell at him, you obviously right. talk through it. And, uh, okay, so what happened there? You know, you, you instead of, you know, being calm and trying to fix the problem, you just freaked out, and that's how, you know. Right. Probably the the only one that really sticks out in my mind that, which again was early on as an instructor, um, a young student, he he goes up there and stalls and put us into uh, the introduction of a spin. We didn't get a full spin, 
right. but he froze off the controls and oh, you know being the size I am I unfortunately I had to hit him on the arm ah. to make him <laughs> and he did exactly what your guy did he threw his hands up yeah. and, and I had control of the plane again but ah. Well, you never know how you're going to react. I mean, people don't until they do it, you know. A lot of people could be totally calm and collected, and then they get in a situation that's unusual and uncomfortable, and they don't, you know, you never know how people are going to react. All right. Left good traffic, Cessna 726 here, Alpha, left base, runway 7, full stop, Lumpkin. Nacogdoches traffic, Cessna 84634 is uh, parting the area to the north, uh, 1,000. Must get to see an awful lot of interesting things in, in this current role. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird how life works. Uh, I, I'm not complaining though. I'd like to uh, an international ferry flight. That's one of my next big goals. Like, take something across the Great Circle, not of course, but yeah. Oh yeah, grease it on right on the center line too. You got that on camera, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> nice job. Yeah, hey, you know, I mean, uh, I'm sure it can happen for you. Uh. Uh, you know, I, I guess those you can still, uh, you know, if you're doing a Meridian or something like that, you can still hop there. But like, uh, I know guys that have done uh, deliveries on like one of these to like Hawaii or something. Oh or yeah, I'm not interested like in that. That. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't even kind of sound appealing to yeah, me. Yeah, your whole, I mean, you, got, you know, you got a hundred tons of gas sitting in the seat behind you and you're like, oh. All right, Deanna. Thank you so much for letting me fly with you. That was a blast. Yeah, Thanks can, for going. I can see you. You're a great instructor. So thank I, you. All right, <laughs> we'll do it again sometime. Absolutely. All right, thank you. All right, thank you for watching another episode of Flying Doodles. This was a lot of fun. We'll catch you on the next one. Please click subscribe and like if you haven't already. And it's uh, Patreon.com/FlyingDoodles. And let's go fly some time. There's a link in the email on how we can go fly.